Hi, it's time for another mystery teardown. And when I say mystery teardown, I really mean it because I have no idea what this is until we actually tear it down. I found this in that big dumpster raid, which I'll link in at the end and down below if you haven't seen it, with a whole bunch of uh, stuff in a dumpster from a mysterious uh, technology company that I'm not allowed to mention. Anyway, this looks like... A PowerPoint and it is a regular oh it's a 15 amp uh, jobby by the way it's got the larger earth pin here it's physically longer than the regular uh, 10 amp one so that's like the industrial 15 amp outlet so anyway it looks like a regular PowerPoint but like where does the mains go in where's Wally where's Wally I guess the mains goes in through a little mini B connector does it and some other is that a, and a micro USB mini B and a, a micro USB. Um, so like what the, what the? Like I, <laughs> if it was something that took the mains as an input and then outputted something, like it measured something or outputted something, then it wouldn't be in this form factor. You wouldn't plug a male powered male pin into a female receptacle. So what on earth? Is it doing? Well, only one way to find out is tear it down. So if we rip the back off here, there's actually a battery door in this. So it's actually battery powered. So, oops, that just comes right off. And we have a little uh, hobby lithium battery in here. One of these nanotech jobs. That looks a bit bit puffy, doesn't it? Hmm. Anyway, anyway 7.4 volt job to sell this side up. <laughs> there you go, thank you. Nice label in there. Ooh, dangerous voltages inside, do not open. <laughs> it's okay, I'm a professional. Return to Platypus Instruments for repair. Platypus Instruments, I love, look at this, I love the logo. That logo is just fantastic. See the platypus, his little eyes and his little bill surrounded by an ohm symbol. Oh, that, that's great. Anyway, Platypus Instruments, don't go look them up now because it might be a uh, spoiler for you if you want to try and uh, figure this out um, from the teardown. But uh, this is a specialised instrument. The company only makes, as far as I know, they only made this um, and it came out in mid-2017. Uh, so it hasn't been out very long. So obviously the company um, who I got this from didn't need it anymore and they uh, tossed it in the dumpster or it got thrown out wet accidentally, whatever it was, or it doesn't work. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it's a specialized bit of test equipment, believe it or not. Well, it's actually test equipment to test test equipment. Can you figure it out yet? So obviously we've got a uh, lithium ion uh, battery input here, reset button. We've got a programming port there and dangerous voltages inside. So let's crack it open. All right, let's have a look inside. Ta-da, look at that. Oh, there's one big ass cap. And of course, yes, it does actually output. Um, ooh, the P, the Pi 3. Version 3.3, March 2017. There you go. So it was it was actually released in mid 2017. So we can, oh, and we've got a couple of LEDs there too, by the way, um, which is quite <laughs> nice because they've used the existing holes on the. These are normally the uh, screw holes that you you know put into the uh, screw into the plate in the wall. They've actually used those screw holes as little lead. Um, yeah, they got little reverse LEDs on there. Anyway, that's pretty cool. So we've got a big ass cap on there and got a couple of, uh, couple of tranny. And that looks like a, some sort of, oh no, worth electronic components. Yep. Is that a custom, uh, tranny or off the shelf? Anyway, got a couple of chokes in here and geez, there's not much else, is there? So, oh, actually there's a fair bit on the bottom. And that's where all the goodness is. Let me get that out. Actually, the first interesting thing here to note here is look at this micro switch. This is actually looks like it's a safety micro switch interlock because it was normally pressing against the back of this plate. So it's designed to detect when we've actually removed the board from there 
And if you have a look where it's connected over to here, it looks like it's connected to some big beefy part of the obviously some sort of power supply system. So it's designed to maybe uh, shut it off or maybe even discharge this huge uh, uh, Rubicon, nice, uh, 450 volt, 220 microfarad cap. So, yeah, maybe some sort of safety interlock to, you know, if people do take it apart to uh, uh, prevent, well, to do, think you'd discharge the cap anyway, wouldn't you, though? But I don't know. So I'll briefly explain what it looks like we've got here. You'll notice, like, we've got different blocks all around here. They seem to be sort of separate functions. So what we've got down here, this section, it's a little bit mysterious. Um, it, you know, it's got a power tranny there and a, what, a couple of optos. And this is actually an LM358. So, like, and there's nothing on the backside, by the way. So almost all the... Uh, circuitries on the top side except for these transformers and the cap and this power resistor here so that's an op amp and just something else this section here this is actually a pic uh, 12f series micro and these two chips here are actually um, half bridge drivers so that's what these two uh, power mosfets are here for and uh, we've got a diode up there and that ties in with uh, this so is that a common mode choke or a transformer? I'm not sure what's doing there. You'd have to look at the configuration. Anyway, so that's uh, got the uh, 400 volt huge cap on there. So obviously this section here is tied into the half bridge uh, drivers here with the MOSFETs. And then here's our output here, by the way, this is our mains output, and it is actually an output, it's not an input. Uh, you don't plug anything into it, like mains, into a female socket. That's not how it works. So it actually outputs stuff. In this section up here, we've got another PIC micro. That's the uh, programming port, of course. We've got a uh, fuse in there. We've got a big uh, shunt resistor up there, and uh, this is a, a, you know, really schmicko uh, MOSFET. And another grunty looking MOSFET here, which drives, seems to be driving this transformer here from Worth. And then the output side of this goes over to here. Oh, look, there's some traces tapping off over to here. So that's probably doing some sort of uh, measurement functionality. Um, it's probably not driving anything, is it? I don't think so. I think it uh, might be tapping off there and measuring. And then the output of that is obviously tied in somehow into our mains output here. And on this section over here, classic R34063. I've done a whole video on that, I'm sure, way back in the day. Um, buck boost converter. So, yeah, look. Nice big 270 ohm power resistors there. Aren't they nice? And, well, what is this thing? Have you figured it out yet? Hmm, I might let the uh, original designer tell you. Roll the videotape. Hello and welcome with Platypus Instruments. What I'm about to share with you may be an interest for you in your personal safety, your business productivity increase and efficiencies. We have patented a pocket inverter which we use for fault trip time testing portable RCDs. The inverter is 240 volt, 50 hertz, pure sine wave, earth neutral bonded, is a very safe form of isolated power supply and also contains a 360 volt DC outlet for voltage proving. The inverter totally eliminates the requirement to connect the mains power and its hazards, totally eliminates the requirement of an isolation transformer it supports standalone RCD testing devices or portable appliance testers with RCD facilities. Even if you have an isolation transformer, you still need power. And some portable appliance testers cannot do 250 volt IR testing, so they have to do leakage testing. The inverter meets all those requirements. Thank you very much, Trev from Platypus Instruments. Um, somewhere here in Sydney, I believe. And it's actually hard to find information on this thing because all they've got is a Facebook page 
like this. They did have a website, but it's gone ski, um, as in like the domain is gone. And it seems to be like a startup uh, thing that they started, and there's videos uh, talking about. I think this is like the investment guy, and it or not investment, like advisement like startup advisor guy or something like that. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, um, yeah, a little startup. He, Trev obviously had this idea for this little uh, portable appliance tester. Tester. So it's a pat tester. Tester. If you, yeah, pat, as in portable appliance tester, tester, tester. Does that make sense? No. Anyway. It's like AC current. It, it, that, that, that's a pretty cool idea because I assume that when you're out on site and you've got these portable appliance testers and you actually want to certify that you're checked that your portable appliance tester is works, you might have to do that once a day or once a week. I don't know uh, the requirements for that sort of thing. Um, you want to make sure it still works. And this tester is designed to test the tester. So a nice niche little, great example of a nice niche little Product and I just love the form factor. There seems to be quite a lot of um, engineering going into this. So uh, they said it was patented. Let's go have a look at the pattern. Now it turns out this is actually an innovation pattern. It's not a full pattern. And I thought I'd do a little spiel on that. And I happen to have my brother-in-law Phil, who is a patent attorney here. And at, at the time, uh, he was just hanging out at the lab the other night, and I shot a video all about patents and it ended up being a half hour thing. So I won't go through that. I'll link it in at the end and down below. If you want, I highly recommend you watch it um, to know all about the difference in all, everything to do with patents. Anyway, it was fantastic. So here is a diagram for it. Um, sorry, that's the crudity that it comes with. <laughs> anyway, it's got a battery charger in here, of course. Uh, that, those were the extra connections you saw on the battery there. They were the um, inner cell uh, taps, of course, uh, to balance charge the uh, lithium. There's a low voltage microprocessor in here, so that would be the one on the high side. There's a PIC uh, 16F series on the high side, and there's a DC to DC converter here, and this is the isolation transformer, that custom worth isolation transformer that we saw, and then there's a uh, regulator here, and there's also got that PIC 12F series micro is the high voltage microprocessor. The microprocessor, of course, doesn't work at high voltage. It's still a 3.3 or a 5 volt microcontroller, but its ground is floating at 240 somewhere, you know, on 240 volts. So it's totally isolated from the um, other micro uh, processor over here. So there you go, and there's the uh, H bridge output uh, filter. So of course we had a half bridge driver, but we had two of those chips and four and two transistors per half bridge. So we've got a full H bridge uh, driver and that generates our sine wave and, and it can measure back. So Bob's your uncle. That's it. It's, you know, it's pretty simple. And, oh, I have to link in the uh, patent at the end, and it goes through the background of the invention and stuff like that. Phil says that this is a bargain basement patent. It's not very long. Um, it's not, He didn't do it himself, but, uh, yeah, it's it, and it's not hugely comprehensive, but it, it gives you some um, detail. There you go, 60 kilohertz, PWM. And the high voltage cap is, of course, charged to uh, 400 volts DC, sustains large voltages, short-term transient output, low currents as required for loads. The high voltage CPU includes a frequency reference from which the 50, 60 hertz output for the PWM is defined, as well as the PID control loop that stabilizes the output voltage, uh, H-bridge over current protection, supplementing the protection inherent in the analog design of the bridge. In addition to the analog bias voltage removal circuits described above to, to protect the MOSFETs, oh, we missed that, um, it also monitors the current flowing through the JFET since the microprocessor is the source of the switch in bias voltage signals. By detecting the overload condition, it can reduce the magnitude of the commanded output to reduce the transient currents present. The output regulation task is performed by the PID algorithm. There you go. Via the Isolation Transformer 22, it wasn't labelled. There were no enunciators on the diagram. So the CPU generates bursts of 35 kilohertz signal to measure the impedance presented by switch 31. There you go. That's interesting. Nice. That's like a like an ESR measurement, like you'll um, do measure ESR of capacitors. You'll do that at 100 kilohertz, typically. In this case, the 35 kilohertz to measure the impedance the switch, excellent. A high impedance presented in the series resonance circuit. I won't go through the whole details of how this whole thing works. You can argue it out in the comments.
and discuss in the comments. Conversely, a closed switch presents low impedance, removes the need for a separate power switch and presents the user with a familiar GPO on off switch which also serves the additional traditional function of high voltage AC switching. Thus the low voltage CPU 16 is able to sense the state of power switch 31 and GPO 30 on the other side of the galvanic isolation barrier. Nice! It's capable of delivering 20 watts of sinusoidal 240 volts to the load indefinitely. Well, <laughs> that little battery's not going to last too long at uh, 20 watts, is it? Or 500 watts for short tens of milliseconds duration K to high peak currents of divan for the device under test. Well, I thought it was only for testing the portable appliance tester. Maybe I, I don't know the details of exactly what test the portable appliance tester does, and we won't go into that, but... Yeah, suffice it to say, they, there was obviously a requirement to have short-term, high-current, uh, high-power pulse capability. And of course, here in Australia, we use the MEN system, the multiple Earth neutral uh, bonded system. And it just goes through the conventional approach to testing RCDs and stuff like that. And there are the claims for the pattern. So, there you go. That's all there is to it. <laughs> a neat little bit of niche test gear. Nice. All right, let's see if this works. I'll power it up with an external uh, 7.4 volt supply. So give it a bell. Switch off on. Nah, sorry. I'm not going to troubleshoot that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little mystery teardown for this really niche little bit of equipment that's actually designed and engineered really quite well. I really like it for a specific purpose. It does its job and it looks like it would do it superbly. So I'm not sure what uh, if Platypus Instruments are still going. Can you still buy it? I don't, <laughs> don't know what the deal is. Um, but yeah, great example of a niche product. So if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and... As always, you can discuss down below in the forum. And if you want to talk about this, I guess you can email Trev. His email was in the video there. Go for it. I'm sure he'll happily answer all your questions. Catch you next time.